Wow, what an event, man. So the energy here is incredible. Um, this is not an event that I would normally speak at. <laughs> I love you guys. You're freaking cool. But this is not the audience that I usually kind of hang out with. So, you know, I'm kind of out of my comfort zone a little bit being here. But I'm really happy to be here because I have something that um, I want to share with you guys. And I think there's something important for the world that we could potentially do together. So I have an ask for everybody in the room that I'm going to get to in this talk. So yeah, as Jason, uh, as Jason mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Niantic, and we make augmented reality experiences. Uh, many of those are games, and millions of people play those games um, every day around the world. We like this. So we think that human beings are at their best when virtual worlds that we create lead people outside into the real world. That's where it really happens. Um, and so our games are all built to encourage people to get off the couch and outside and into the real world. We um, use these three principles to guide our product development. So everything that we build, we want to follow these rules. So we're trying to create um, applications that encourage people to explore. You know, that's a big sounding word, but maybe it just means visiting a park across town that you haven't been to before. Uh, we want to encourage people to exercise, get those few thousand steps in every day. You all obviously know how important that is. And the last one is we want to encourage people to uh, engage in social networks, but not the kind that most people think of when you hear that word. Real life social interactions with other human beings. We think that's incredibly important to uh, human well-being. So I don't need to tell you all how important exercise is. You know, you all know that. You live it. You feel it. But the thing is, uh, we're not reaching everybody yet. Together, we're not reaching everybody yet. We're not reaching most people yet. So I think technology can be part of that solution. I actually think games, as unlikely as that may sound, can be part of that. And I'm going to talk about it today. And I know that you all are part of that solution. I want to start out by um, thanking all of you for what you do. Many of you are, are veterans, so that has a special meaning in that sense. But just in terms of fitness, you know, you're out there trying to help people get fit and stay fit. That's incredibly important for many, many reasons. But right now, I think it's more important than it's ever been. In this country, we're living through more than one health crisis, health crisis in America right now. Our national, let's call it inertia, has ravaged our bodies and, and our minds. That was a problem even before COVID. But if we've learned anything from the past two years, it's how important movement and exercise and those real life social connections are with other people. You all know that, you know, you're active, you're fit. A lot of you are probably high school athletes, college athletes, you're professional, professional fitness instructors, military veterans. So you know what being active feels like. You know the power that gives you, and you know how it affects your mood. But not everybody's so lucky. Most people don't get to feel that way, you know? Humanity is a distribution, it's a distribution curve, and you all are lucky, you're on one end of that curve, okay? But a lot of people don't enjoy those benefits today. It's not just actually a lot of people, it's most people, the majority of people. You probably know this stat, but it's worth kind of reminding ourselves only one in four American adults gets the minimum amount of recommended daily exercise. That's the minimum. That's a few thousand steps and 30 minutes of elevated heart rate. It's not a high bar. The worst of it is, it's even, it's even worse for kids. So only one in five American high schoolers gets that minimum amount of daily exercise. We know the physical um, health impacts of that. We talked about 
Heart health earlier, uh, it was great to get those pointers. Um, you all know that lack of exercise has many negative health outcomes. It's associated, of course, uh, with heart disease, many kinds of cancer, type two diabetes, which is on the rise. So really, really, really important for us to exercise for that reason alone. But there's a whole other crisis going on and that's the mental health crisis. So we're really struggling around the world. Just in the past few years, instances of serious anxiety and depression have doubled around the world. And that got worse during COVID. You know, we had all this other pressure on us. And people are trying to find solutions to that. Not everybody's making the right choices. During the first year of COVID, instances of deaths from drug overdoses went up by 30%. That was 100,000 more people dying every year from drug overdoses. So the U.S. Surgeon General actually declared a mental health crisis in the U.S. for kids. There are a lot of stats around teen suicide that I don't want to even go into. It's, it's, it's really too dark. So let's bring that back to us and you know, why y'all are here today and, and what this event is about. So how does exercise and fitness relate to this mental health crisis? I think a lot of you are probably following the research and you know there's an increasing amount of clinical evidence that exercise is directly related to our mood and how we feel. So recent studies have shown that exercise is as or more effective as a prescription antidepressant in treating depression, and it's available to all of us. So every workout gives us a chemical reprieve from that anxiety. It takes the stress off, and it actually elevates our thinking. So we're actually, we think more clearly and more sharply when we exercise. Knowing that doesn't really require the, me the medical evidence, I think a lot of us work out because we want that feeling. You know, we want to quiet those voices in our heads. We want to find that calm. We want to find that place where, you know, we can be at home in our own bodies and our own minds. The problem is that um, most people are not there. Most people are not getting that benefit today. The question I want to put to all of you is how different would our world be if everybody had access to those tools. We know that 75% of adults, 80% of kids aren't benefiting from that exercise today. So what if we could break that cycle and give everybody the tools they need to navigate the stresses and pressures of the world that we live in? At Niantic, we think it's our job to try to give everybody those tools. We're trying to reach out and include the people that are basically left out of the fitness world today. And I think that um, collectively, it's our responsibility to try to do that together. So how would we do that? There are many paths to fitness. Um, there are ones that you all work on, the ones that we think of every day, rock, CrossFit, um, biking, running, yoga, weightlifting, all those are great paths to fitness but they're not reaching everybody. And you know, I would argue that we need to think more broadly about that and consider this idea of a game. Um, you might be skeptical, you know, can video games actually be part of the solution? But I would argue that absolutely games can be part of the solution if they're encouraging people to get up and move and get off the couch and out into the world. For me, it was a, it was a personal uh, story. It was with my own family. Um, I encouraged my kids to use computers and to play games. I wanted them to have that experience. Um, I wanted them to have that advantage, but I found as my kids were getting more involved in these virtual worlds, it was actually harder and harder to pull them away from that and get them out into the real world. 
Even in Northern California, where we have mountains and beaches and forests and waterfalls practically in our backyard. So that was the beginning of my work and our work at Niantic to try to take those qualities of video games that are so compelling, that draw our kids in. Some of those qualities are addictive. And we tried to marry those with healthy activities, marry those with getting outside and being active and moving. That led to the creation of our first game, Ingress. Uh, Jason mentioned that earlier. And of course, Pokemon Go. Um, I think probably most of you are familiar with how Pokemon Go works. You're using your phone, and through augmented reality, you're able to go out into the world and discover and find hundreds of species of Pokemon that you capture with the game. There are activities that you can do together with other players. After we released the game in 2016, it quickly became one of the most popular applications in the world. And uh, today, it's been downloaded over 500 million times. So it's touched a lot of people. One of the most fulfilling things in my professional career has been hearing from people about how it's affected their lives. And yes, when we were talking to Michael Rodriguez uh, yesterday, I was hearing his story from, uh, from the conversation with Jason. I was in awe of this guy, 10 Tours of Duty, the work that he's doing on the monument. And uh, I was floored whenever he came at me with a comment that he loved playing Pokemon Go with his family. And it was something that they enjoyed doing together. Um, that kind of story is the, something, is the kind of thing that we hear pretty frequently. We had a meetup here in Jacksonville, and I heard two stories this morning from players who recovered from cancer, and the game was a big part of that journey for them. I think back to meeting this woman. Uh, she's a player of our first game, Ingress, kind of early in our journey uh, at Niantic. It was up in Seattle, and she approached me, kind of this grandmotherly woman, not what we expected in terms of the audience that we would attract with a mobile game, um, but she started talking about her health condition. Uh, she struggled with diabetes, she had a bad hip, and she had trouble just walking to the sidewalk in front of her house. And so she told me this story about her, how her grandson had introduced her to the game, and that it created this incentive, this subtle nudge to be active every day. And so she began walking first to the sidewalk, then to the end of the block. And at the time that she told me the story, she had walked a few hundred kilometers. Um, she wrote uh, the company a couple of years later to tell us that she had achieved her goal of walking a thousand kilometers playing our game, you know, encouraged by the mechanics of the game, but also the community. She was hanging out with, you know, in Seattle, like tattooed bike messengers and students, uh, young professionals, people from all walks of life. That community and the game really contributed to her personal uh, health. If you come to our events, if you were to look at our mail, you'd see a lot of stories like this. I wanted to share a couple more. This was a letter uh, from a woman about her father. And uh, she wrote to tell us that after 15 years of taking medication for diabetes, today my father was cured. A new me medication, one may ask. The cure, after introducing my father to Pokemon Go almost a year ago, he has quite possibly become the most emphatic of senior citizen players. So... Not what we expected, but again, great to hear. Uh, another young woman uh, wrote us, and she talked about having autism. And uh, she described it this way. She said, this game has broken down the walls of my room where I used to be trapped. It's introduced me to people I can connect with. It has shown me a world outside of my own that isn't at all perfect, but worth exploring and living in. This young woman, Kimberly, I met at uh, a recent event. So we just got back into having live events uh, for our players. Um, every month we'll have these at various places around the world. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of gamers will show up to these. And Kimberly walked up to me and started telling me her story. And I said, well, hold on. Let me pull out my phone. I, I want to record this. And she was kind enough to allow me to do that. So I recorded it. The audio is not great, but I want you to hear this story directly from her. So I'm gonna play it now. I'm talking to John Hank here right now, and I, I just wanted to tell him how basically much I this game means to me. And in like the first year of this game, uh, I like I lost a whole lot of weight, like over a hundred. And this this game is why I'm alive, a hundred percent. Like I wasn't going to 
I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere in life. I wasn't going out of the house. And like I caught a Growlithe on day one. And I was like, this is an awesome game. Like, and then it just took off. And I never looked back. Every single day I've never played. I've never not played. So thank you so much. So Kimberly, uh, she, has a, she has a new career now. She's a Pokemon Go influencer, and she's traveling to our events around the world. Um, actually persuaded Kimberly to come out here to be with us today and to be at our event here in Jacksonville. She's here in the audience. She's right over here. So maybe we could give Kimberly a, a round of applause. Thank you. So our approach has reached millions of people around the world. Um, and I think that's great, but I'm not really here to sell you on what we do. I'm here to ask for your help. You all know how powerful fitness can be, how it can contribute to your health and your mental well-being. Um, but we got to reach more people, and I want to issue a challenge to you. And the challenge is how can we expand that definition of fitness to welcome all the people, adults and children, who don't enjoy those benefits today, those people who haven't yet found their daily habit. I think there's an opportunity here, a commercial opportunity, to think about what kinds of products and services that we can create to really meet people where they are and help this huge number, this vast number of people who aren't active and aren't fit today, to help them discover the way to take that first step, that first step on their way to a million more. What could that be? I don't know. One of the reasons I'm here is to see what you all are doing and talk to people here. Um, every month around the world, thousands of Pokemon Go players turn up in parks around the world. Maybe there's room for classes, organized classes, to lead people in Pokemon Go catching trips around the park. Maybe that could be combined with other kinds of physical activity. Um, what does it take to connect with a set of people that aren't coming to fitness classes today and aren't getting those steps and that exercise in the day? It could be more than that. Um, a few years ago, Jason and I collaborated uh, around our first game, Ingress. So this is a game that's similar to Pokemon Go. It's an AR game that people play through their phones, out in the world. Um, it's a little bit more competitive. There are two teams that are battling one another. Uh, but it's still, it's, you know, these are gamers. And we combine that with a Go Rock event. So we had Jason, the Go Rock cadre there, special forces trained personnel, they're putting these gamers through these hardcore physical activities with backpacks, push-ups, making them get wet and muddy. And uh, you might think that's a weird combination, but um, the players loved it. You know, they're playing the game. They got this physical challenge at the same time. And I think it's one of the coolest things that we've ever done. You know, Jason talked about these worlds colliding. You know, I think magic can happen when we bring these worlds together. So I wanna challenge you to think creatively about how we can make the world a better place by showing people from all walks of life and all levels of fitness, how movement and exercise can transform bodies and minds and lives. Bringing that vast number of people who aren't getting the benefits today, um, it can transform not only their lives, but I think it can transform society as a whole. We make a small change that affects a large number of people, and we can make a big difference. And more people that are healthy and sane and happy and connected to one another, that's a great thing for all of us. We need more of that, more people that are healthy and sane and happy and connected. So I think, um, I think that uh, together, we can build a more active world, but also a healthier society by taking this message of being active and being fit and being connected with other people and taking it out to all the people that aren't enjoying those benefits today. So I hope you'll join me in embracing this mission and in helping to realize this mission. So I wanna thank you for all that you do I'm happy to have this chance to be here and talk to you today. And if you have ideas about how to pursue this together, I would love to hear from you. So thank you all.